Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Freehold Regional High School Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you're here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to submit those by using the Q&A button. You are welcome to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. And lastly, this recording will be available early, early next week. All sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash F-R-H-S-D. We are currently in session F4, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentations for tonight. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our first representative from Elon University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tokumi Olalaya, and I'm the admissions counselor at Elon University working with students from New Jersey. So really excited to be here this evening to talk a bit more about Elon with you all. So we'll begin by talking about where we're located. So we are located in Elon, North Carolina, really easy to remember that way. And we are centrally located. So as you can see on the map here, we have the Greensboro, Charlotte, and the Raleigh-Durham area surrounding us, which creates spaces for our students to kind of hang out and explore, as well as internship and job placement po during their time at Elon and post Elon. We're about two and a half hours away from the mountains and then about three hours away from the coast. We are a medium-sized private, private liberal arts institution with an undergraduate enrollment of around 6,300 students there. With 80% of our students coming from out of state and those top enrollment states being in those Northeastern regions. So New Jersey, New York, Massachusetts, Maryland, and, um, and Pennsylvania as well. We have 47 states represented, 48 countries, and then it's Elon's top priority to ensure that we are recruiting a diverse array of students. And I'm proud to say that 19% of our students identify as racially and ethnically diverse on campus. And then shifting a bit now to that academic experience. To start, when you apply to the university, you're applying to Elon as a whole rather than a specific school or program. We have four schools being our School of Education, Business, Communication, and then our College of Arts and Sciences. And you actually have until the midway point of your sophomore year to officially declare a major. So you can come and take different, take different classes before you make that official decision. We have over 60 majors and 75 different minors. And then you can see by these last two numbers here that Elon is committed to providing that smaller learning engaging environment. But you're able to interact one on one with your faculty members and your professors and they actually know who you are and you can build those relationships there. So 20 students in an average class, and all of our classes are actually capped at 33, meaning you'll never have more than 33 students in a class at all during your four years. And then these five experiential learning opportunities that you see here are really what the hallmark of that Elon experience as a student. So these are all ways for you to apply what you're learning inside the classroom to these real world environments outside of the classroom, which is where you'll be living and working in post Elon. Our students are actually required to complete two out of the five that you see here, but many will complete three or four for all five of these. 80% of our students will study abroad at least once, and we are nationally ranked as the best U.S. study abroad program, study abroad program in the U.S. there. We have around 88% of our students completing at least one internship, which 67% of those are actually leading to job offers. So again, preparing you for success post-Elon. Research which ties in that one-to-one -one mentorship with faculty members, service learning, which highlights that citizenship, so addressing these local needs and the campus and community, and finding real solutions to these real issues. And then lastly, leadership. Around 77% of our students hold a leadership role on campus. So your life at Elon looks like a lot of different things outside the classroom, like attending different clubs and organizations and getting involved, or maybe starting your own club on campus, which you have the opportunity to to do division one athletics so we are a division one athletic school in the coalition athletic association playing schools such as james madison drexel hofstra and towson university and all games and events are free for you as a student so as long as you have your phoenix card you're all set to go 
And then lastly, food. You want to know what are you going to be eating, how much of it can you eat, and when can you eat it? And at Elon, we have a variety of different options for you to choose from. Three different dining halls that each have different themes, and then over 10 different retail restaurants, which allow for you to feel as though you're eating on cam off campus with the convenience and access of still being on campus. And then shifting to what does this Elon experience look like? Essentially, what is that return on investment going to be like for you? As you can see by these numbers here, life after Elon looks very successful for our graduates. They are employed in graduate school, completing internship, internships and working in service organizations nine months post-graduation. And not only that, they're taking jobs in their field, which is ultimately one of those ma the main goals of higher education there. And our students are experiencing those levels of success. As I mentioned, we are a nationally ranked institution, number one best college, number one best study abroad program, and then number two there for first year experiences, which is also why our freshman to sophomore year retention rate is at 91%, meaning that our students are loving that experience and they're coming back and they're staying at Elon. And then coming to the end here, some important details for you as you begin to um, narrow down colleges to apply to. We're looking for, um, we're looking at your GPA. So we do recalculate giving weight for AP, IB and honors courses. Mid ranges for you there. We are a holistic review process, meaning that myself as your admissions counselor, I'm actually going through and reading your application and giving it the attention it needs and deserves. We're looking at your essay and then demonstrating interest. So essentially interacting with me, your admissions counselor, any staff, and letting us know that Elon is this institution that you're interested in. And then lastly, our most recent update, we have moved to a test optional admissions, meaning test scores are not required for this year or the next academic cycle to come. And no way will your application be affected if you choose not to submit those test scores. And our application can be found on the Common app as well as the Elon application on our website. And we do not have a preference for which one you choose to apply through. Whichever is easiest for you, feel free to apply through that platform. And then lastly, I have my contact information for you all here. I'd love for you all to stay connected with me. Um, feel free to give me a call or email me, and I'm happy to get that communication going. I will stop sharing my screen and hand it over to the next presenter. Awesome. Thank you. The next representative is from High Point University. All right, good, good evening, everybody. My name is Ryan Dillon. I'm one of the senior admissions counselors here at High Point University in High Point, North Carolina. Uh, once you're done uh, visiting Elon, you can keep following that road through Greensboro and come visit us at High Point. We are uh, residing right in High Point, North Carolina, which is right outside of Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, we are a, a medium-sized school, so about 5,000 uh, 5, to 5,500 uh, 5, students. Uh, for our undergraduate degrees with about a thousand students currently for our graduate school program. So we have about 6,500 students total here on campus. Our students are ranging from all 50 states and 37 different countries currently here at HPU uh, with a lot of students coming from my home state of New Jersey. I'm originally born in Ocean County. Um, so I've been to Freehold more times than I can count. And it's really great that I also get to work with New Jersey students as well. Uh, high point, we have uh, what we call our four pillar system of academic success. So we want to make sure that our students can be able to be as well rounded as they possibly can. Uh, so first, we look at that academic excellence. Uh, we have our top 10 majors right here, but we have 60 majors. Uh, here at HPU from undeclared business, biology, exercise science, and psychology being our top ones. So it means that you don't have to have everything all figured out right now. If you have a couple majors you're looking at, even if you know exactly what you want to do, we don't ask our students to declare their major till the end of their sophomore year, which allows them to be able to try out different majors to find out exactly maybe what will fit right for them and what road or career options that they'll be able to do after they graduate from High Point University. Um, with that extraordinary education, we're bringing some amazing faculty who have gone, uh, done their postdoctorates uh, at Duke, at Carolina, at uh, 
Harvard, Yale, uh, we want to make sure that our students are learning from the best and brightest in the field. Um, so 90% to 100% of our uh, teaching is done by professors. So we don't have any TAs, we don't have any graduate school students. We might have some adjunct professors that are coming in, uh, but we do try to keep everything to being 100% taught by faculty. We have a 15 to 1 faculty to student ratio here at HPU, as well as a four year graduation guarantee. That means as long as you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing, you are 100% going to graduate in that four years, as well as this year and as well as the years coming, we'll be able to offer a tuition-free fifth-year master's program in business and communication leadership for all students who graduate within that four-year program. So you can have a tuition-free master's. All you have to do is pay housing and the fees that go along with it, and you can go and get your master's degree in a year after that program as well as student success coaches that'll help with your transition from senior year of high school to freshman year of college. We have some amazing uh, state-of-the-art facilities here. This is our planetarium. It's actually the second largest in North Carolina, um, but we also have a human biomechanics lab, a physiology lab for our PA, PT, OT students. Uh, we have the, cons the conservatory, which you see in front of you, as well as the planetarium, as well as multiple different bb and boardrooms that all over campus to help practice presentations and different board pitches that you may have within your different majors. And like we have for our professors, we also want students to have access to world industry leaders here at HPU. So the top left is actually Mark Randolph. He's the co-founder of Netflix. And on the bottom right-hand corner, you remember Steve Wozniak, who is the co-founder of Apple. Um, these amazing men and amazing women and just amazing business people and people in the industry come back to be able to teach our students exactly what's going on into the different majors that they're looking to get into. Uh, on the bottom left is Sint Marshall, who is the CEO of the Dallas Mavericks, who gets to work with our sports management majors, as well as uh, Larry Quinn, who is the head sales rep for Xerox for over 30 different for 30 years, as well as the head of our sales program here at High Point. And with all of that access and all of these opportunities, we want our students to have a four year development of those life skills. So being able to get into undergraduate research starting your freshman year, being able to have an internship all four years, if you would like here at High Point, we want to make sure our students are getting those experiences to build their resume, build their confidence and build their uh, build their skill set while they're here at High Point, because that's what college is for, is to be able to learn and grow and build these experiences so you can go out and be successful and be exactly who you want to be right after college. So that's what we want to do for our students, so much so that 97% of our students have a job or in grad school within six months of graduating, and those students are going exactly into their field. They don't have to just settle for any job that comes about. They're settling for or going for those jobs that they really want to be in, that they're major really dictated, which is awesome. And we also want to model those values and build character. So to students, we know that a lot changes over your four years. You could probably look at yourself as a freshman and say, wow, thank goodness I'm not that person anymore. Uh, and we want to keep that going. We want you to be able to continuously change. That doesn't mean we're going to tell you what to think or how to think, but we're going to promote that growth. Uh, last year, we had 110,000 hours of community service. Even with COVID, we were able to give back to our local community here in High Point with different nonprofits. Uh, we have 150 different clubs and activities, a lot of them being service-based that our students are just going out and being able to be the best version of themselves. We have an MLK day of service where students don't have class, but instead are uh, in Courage to go into the local community as uh, and be able to donate their time. So we want our students to be uh, both amazing in and out of the classroom. So if you would like to look at more about High Point University, we would love to have you. My information is right here on the screen. Uh, our application is open in August on the Common App. And if you have any questions, I'll be here all night. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Just a friendly reminder that if anyone has any questions at all, to feel free to submit those through the Q&A. Our representatives are here to answer, answer any questions that you have regarding the college application process or even a specific question about the school. And if you do, please feel free to also note the school name. The next representative is from NC State University. 
Good evening, y'all. It's great to be with you. My name is Tyler Tucky. I'm one of our assistant directors. I'm originally based from my home office in Rhode Island, but I work with all of our students from the Northeast. So um, I would be your direct admission counselor. When we look at NC State University, we're located right in Raleigh, North Carolina. So the capital of the state, a quick seven hour drive from New Jersey. So up and down 95 gets you right into the heart of campus. We're about an hour and a half away from the Outer Banks of North Carolina, about two hours from the mountain. So right in the middle and definitely have a, a great location within the city. So about a mile and a half outside the downtown area, which we'll talk about next. NC State is known to be a STEM institution. We're definitely not science, technology, engineering, and math exclusive, but those are some of our most prominent majors on campus, and we'll look at the more than 100 that we offer. We do have more than 36,000 total students, about 25,000 of those being undergraduate students. 20% of students start out as transfer students. And when we look to our top 10 out of state states, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts are all very well represented. We're continually ranked as one of the best values for out-of-state students, and you'll see why on our last slide tonight. So looking at location, we're really proud to call Raleigh our home. We have a really traditional college campus that sits about two miles outside the downtown area, where all of the attributes of a bustling big city can be found for our students. Looking for any different kind of experience, whether that is headed to some world-class art museums, getting out into some great city parks, our students will constantly interact with both local and national businesses, gaining experience as well as enjoying their time in Raleigh. Raleigh is one of the best cities in the South, great city for college students and so many new and um, entrepreneurial areas and aspects of the city are there for our students to enjoy. We are one of two public research intensive universities as well as the largest university in North Carolina. Looking a little bit at our campus layout, so our campus does have three distinct areas and sections. One to highlight is our Centennial Campus. So this is about a 10 minute bus ride south of our main campus, so which is where you'll find our gymnasium, our residence halls, really the heart of our first year experience can be found on main campus. But our Centennial Campus is very unique. We have more than 70 industry, government, and nonprofit partners who share this campus with us. So they're located right here on campus and work with all of our students, our faculty, and our staff on a daily basis. And they also continually hire our graduates. So that is a great way just to get connected. We're ranked as 10th in undergraduate entrepreneurship, and you'll find that entrepreneurial spirit through many of our different programs that we offer. As a result of our students' hard work and determination, we've launched more than 170 startups and spinoffs, um, and all of these can be found by our students, and um, definitely a great opportunity to do hands-on learning for undergraduate research, and then take what you know and apply that to the real world. We also have this state-of-the-art library here on Centennial Campus, but I'd remiss not to mention that in addition to a state-of-the-art library, we also have Recreational Lake Raleigh on campus and a public golf course right here at Centennial Campus. One of the perks of headed south to college is there's less population density and a lot more room to spread out. I like to say that we've been socially distanced before that was a thing. So lots of opportunities to enjoy the outdoors and a lot more days of sunshine in the south. Looking at our students and how they find success on campus. So we have more than a, more than 700 student organizations to take part in. So you'll find those really for all different interests. We have clubs and organizations for anything that you could be possibly looking for. So our students are highly involved. We encourage you to continue that high school involvement at the college level. We also have some really awesome student support centers. We just finished a renovation of one of our two libraries to integrate our student support center, our student success center into our Hill Library. And so there you'll find tutorial services, one-on-one -on -one advising, a lot of really great hands-on um, learning, as well as our career development center who works hands-on and make sure that students are well prepared for that next step of their professional journeys. At NC State, we do have a residential component. So all first year students are expected to live in our residence halls and of which one of our signature experiences is our living learning villages. So this is interest-based housing, does not depend on your major. Some are major specific, others are not, and have lots of opportunities to engage with those who share similar interests. And then finally, we are a hands-on um, university. You'll be able to complete undergraduate research in any of our 100 plus different majors that we offer. 
as I mentioned, we do have 100 plus majors. You can find all of these listed at majorsandminors.ncstu.edu. Just to highlight a couple, we do have programs for first year students who are figuring out what they want to apply for. So we offer an exploratory studies program, general to the university, help you discover what that undergraduate major is going to be. It is a one-on-one -on -one advising system. So lots of opportunities to break down into our small classes. 35 is our average class size. 14 to one student to faculty ratio at NC State. We also have programs for both engineering and life science students who know they wanna end in that field, but not quite sure where they wanna start. So these are great opportunities to explore all of the different majors. And we do request students uh, choose both a first and a second choice major as a part of your application. Some quick notes, how to apply. Um, this is fairly standard. So lots of time to find out that information on our website, but I do just wanna highlight some of our cost of attendance as well as our scholarship. So our cost of attendance for that first year, about $45,000. We do offer a full tuition scholarship, our park scholarship, and we do retain a certain number of those scholarships for out of state students. So that would be something that you definitely wanna circle and highlight. We do expect you to complete your application to both NC State as well as the Park Scholarship by November 1st of your senior year. So that is a big one. And then finally, just want you to stay in touch with us. Follow us on social media. Our accounts are all run by current students. So have a great opportunity to learn more, see a day in the life of an undergraduate student. And I'll put some of my contact information in the chat. Thanks so much. Feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A. Very helpful information. Thank you. The next representative is from Coastal Carolina University. I don't know if you all can see that. Sure. Okay. All right, everyone. Like she said, I am from Coastal Carolina University. My name is Aliyah Talinsky, and I am one of the assistant directors of admissions events. So you heard a lot um, about the schools from, sorry, I just want to make sure I was off mute. You heard a lot from schools from North Carolina, but now I am going to talk about Coastal Carolina that's located in Conway, South Carolina. So we're actually about nine miles west from Myrtle Beach. So if any of you visited the Myrtle Beach area or that 60 mile stretch, which is the Grand Strand area, you definitely were close to our campus. So as you can see, this first slide says explore Teal Nation. So I'm going to go a little bit into that. All right, so campus size. So we're not too big, not too small. We have approximately 10,000 students. That includes undergraduate and graduate students. Um, we have five academic colleges. Those colleges are um, the Wall College of Business Administration, Spadoni College of Education. We also have our Edwards College of Humanities and Fine Arts. We have our Gupta College of Science, and we also have our HTC Honors College and Center for Interdisciplinary Studies. Within those five academic colleges, we have over 90 programs of study, and you can definitely check out all those programs on our website under academics. So class sizes. So even though we're a medium sized campus, we don't have any lecture size halls. So your class sizes are going to be mid 20s to low 30s. And then as you continue on in your program, you may only have, you know, less than 20 students in that class. So you're really getting that um, relationship connection with your professors um, and that undivided attention from them. Student to faculty ratio for every 16 students, there is one faculty member and about about 80% of our faculty possess a doctoral or terminal degree. So our students here at Coastal are being taught by those who have reached their highest level of education. Campus life. Um, so we have over 120 student organizations. You name it, we have it. I tell students that are looking at Coastal that are involved in high school and just really want to continue their involvement, Coastal is absolutely the place for you to come. We have anything from Greek life to honor societies, marching band, faith-based organizations, really you name it, you or uh, you name it, we have it. Um, and then there's also an opportunity for you to find out about those clubs and organizations right at the beginning of the school year so you can jump right in into whatever you're interested in. 
We also have 19 Division I athletics. We are part of the Sun Belt Conference, and our women's lacrosse team is part of the Atlantic Sun Conference. Um, just to name a few of our athletic teams, our um, men's baseball um, were World College Series champions back in 2016, and our men's football team um, were actually ranked in the top 10 um, in the nation this past season, which is a lot of fun. You can see that picture of our teal turf. We're really proud of that teal turf. Um, and then our newest sport here at Coastal is women's beach volleyball. Now we do have club sports, which is an opportunity for you to travel and play against other institutions. Um, and then we also have intramural sports where you play right here on Coastal's campus um, with other Coastal students. Okay, moving on to the application process since I don't have that much time. So we received over 15,000 applications last year. We like to consider ourselves Teal Nation. As you can see, the entire US is covered in Teal because we do receive applications from all over the US and the world. Um, those darker teal states, that's where we receive most of our applications, which obviously you all coming from New Jersey, that is that darker teal state. Um, it's about 50-50 for our students. Um, about half of our students come from the state of South Carolina, and about half of our students come from out of state and internationally. So you're really going to meet students from all over. Freshman requirements, so GPA, what we're looking at, we're looking at anywhere from a 3.2 to a 4.0 GPA, ACT anywhere from a 19 to a 24, and SAT anywhere from a 1020 to an 1170. We do super score, so we'll take your best overall score if you take your ACT or SAT test multiple times. Um, and we uh, will take either, so it's really whichever test you prefer, we will look at either your ACT or SAT test, but this is our 50% middle range. We are test optional as well. So if you have a cumulative GPA of a 3.5 or higher, um, you can submit your application without test scores. We do like to see that you have a rigorous college prep program, which then will allow you to be uh, test optional admitted. We don't require any letters of recommendation or essays, but we strongly encourage you to submit those if you are choosing to apply as test optional. We want to know as much about you as a student as we possibly can get to make our best decision on admission for you. Some dates to look at. So December 1 is a priority date for Freshman Merit Awards. We are rolling admission, so you can apply at any point during your year of senior year, but I encourage all students to apply by that December 1 date. There's two ways to apply. You can either apply um, through coastal.edu backslash apply or through the Common App, which I know is very popular among a lot of students in the state of New Jersey. Once we get all your information, give us about three weeks to let you know of a decision. Um, so I always encourage students, applications open up typically the first week of August. So I would get those applications in as soon as possible. This is a look at our first time freshman merit awards. They range anywhere from 15% of full-time tuition to 60% of full-time tuition. So this really gives you an idea of what we're looking for in a merit award. And that's it for me. Um, here's my contact information. I do work with all students from the state of New Jersey. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to chat and help you out with your application process. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all to feel free to submit those through the Q&A. Any questions at all that you think of, feel free to again to drop those in there. Our representatives are here to help and answer any questions that you have. And if you have a specific question to also note the school name. Our last representative, but certainly not least, is from the University of South Carolina. Good evening, y'all. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Um, it's always a pleasure to work with students from Freehold. So um, my name is Allie Warwick. I am the Regional Admissions Representative for USC, and I cover all of Eastern Pennsylvania and Southern New Jersey. I know that y'all might not consider yourself Southern New Jersey, but I have your county anyway, um, and it is a absolute pleasure to work with y'all and to speak with y'all tonight. So here I am representing the University of South Carolina. We have 
quite a lot to offer. We have students from all 50 states and over 100 different countries coming down to join Gamecock Nation. New Jersey is actually, this past year, it was our third most common state um, for students to come down outside of South Carolina to join our institution. Um, so when we're talking about why students come down, there's a lot of reasons um, that students end up choosing the University of South Carolina for their four years and then truly their lifetime is to be a part of this Gamecock family. First and foremost, I do want to talk about where we're located. We are located right smack dab in the center of the state in the heart of the state capital of Columbia, South Carolina. So when I say a state capital or a city, I'm not talking about a city like New York or Philadelphia or Washington, DC. It's a lot smaller. It feels a little bit more like a suburb, but still everything you want to have right there at your fingertips right in, you know, steps away from your residence hall, from your academic buildings, everything is right there for you. Um, Columbia is growing a lot. I think it's, it's almost unrecognizable from when I started there almost 10 years ago to what it has become today. There's farmers markets every Saturday. There's three main downtown districts of Columbia, all within walking distance of our residence halls and academic buildings in the center of campus. Everything is very walkable. Um, there's a lot of nature, um, you know, hiking trails. There's a river that runs through campus. Um, and, you know, food, weather is always amazing. I know a lot of students love to move down from the Northeast uh, to South Carolina or the Carolinas in general for, for the warm weather. Um, and trust me, I was also one of those students too, originally coming from Maryland. So another reason why students end up choosing the University of South Carolina is because of our top notch academic programs. So we do have over 100 different majors and more than 300 unique combinations of majors, minors and cognates. So truly anything that you're interested in studying at South Carolina, you're not put into a box and you can absolutely, you know, cut across colleges and, and explore interests in one field um, and then also another that may be completely different from one another. We are very well known for quite a few of our nationally ranked programs. Um, just to touch on a couple of them real quickly, our, our international business program has actually been ranked number one for the last 22 years consecutively. Um, so if you're looking to study business really of any kind in South Carolina at the University um, of South Carolina, we have one of the best programs that you could be looking at um, in, in the world, very well known program there. We're also very well known for our College of Nursing um, with a 100% pass rate for the NCLEX on students first time attempting that exam, uh, which is that certification exam for, for nurses. And then we also have the nation's number one honors college for a public university. We have held that title since 2012, one of those that we are extremely proud of um, and very grateful to, to continue that legacy um, down at USC with our honors college. So I know I mentioned a couple of these already, but uh, this is all of the academic colleges and schools that are available to our students at USC. And like I mentioned, you can absolutely double major in two completely different things. You can minor in something completely different from your major. Um, you can pursue research in something that is not major related. Um, maybe you're a dance major, but you have a really strong interest in psychology um, and you want to participate in a research project or maybe start your own um, or work in somebody's lab, a faculty or staff member's lab at USC in, in something that interests you. Um, we have a College of Pharmacy as well. So if you're interested in going into that particular program, it's actually a six year PharmD degree. So what that means is you would spend your first two years at USC as a pre-pharmacy major, then you'd apply for the upper division, which is four total years. And at the end of six years, right there on our campus in Columbia, South Carolina, you have your pharmacy doctorate degree. Um, so it's a really great one-stop shop for anybody who's looking into that field, um, especially maybe in the health sciences, but you don't wanna be a doctor, you don't wanna be a nurse um, or anything like that. You're thinking about pharmacy, we have a really great program for that. Learning beyond the classroom is another huge piece to that academic experience at South Carolina to really contextualize what you're doing in the classroom and bring it to life in the real world. Um, so internships are a huge piece to the curriculum for most majors. Um, not every major at South Carolina requires one. However, all students are definitely encouraged to participate in at least one internship by the time they graduate. Research shows that this is what makes the biggest difference when it comes to graduation um, and, and getting a job as you're walking across the stage um, in May of 2026, I guess for many of you. Um, so uh, we also have study abroad at South Carolina, which we were very eager to send our students back out into the field, um, into the field, into the into their countries for their global experiences, um, whether it's major related curriculum that they're studying at a host institution in Ireland, Scotland, New Zealand, Australia, 
Greece, Spain, Italy, Germany, anywhere you want to go, um, or if they're doing a research project or community service, we have all different kinds of trips and actually over a thousand that you can choose from um, that vary for how long you go, what you do when you're there, who you study with, um, and, and things like that. Student life is also probably the biggest part of the culture at South Carolina. We are very much a passionate and involved community of students and staff alike. Um, so if that being said, I know you're looking at that pool there and you're like, oh my gosh, how do I how do I get to, to go in that pool? Well, that's actually our gym. That's not the country club resort down the road. Um, so, you know, getting involved is a very easy thing to do at USC, whether it's in intramural sports or student government, Greek life, leadership organizations, anything like that is available to you with any of our 500 organizations. Real quickly, I'm going to give you all a snapshot of what we're looking for when it comes time to admit to um, admit our students to USC. Um, just to be transparent with you all, we have not made any official decision regarding our test optional policy for the um, incoming class of fall 2022. So TBD on that. Um, at this time, we, we don't have a decision for you, un uh, unfortunately, but um, this summer we will be able to let you know whether or not we will be requiring test scores. Um, we are on the Common App, um, and these are the app, the required courses that you need to complete by the time you graduate in order to be eligible for admission at South Carolina. Um, and here are our deadlines. These are not slated to change, so if you want to take a picture of these, please feel free to do so. Our application will open on August 1st, and our earliest deadline is October 15th. It is a non-binding early action deadline, and students are guaranteed to hear back in mid-December. I'm sorry, I'm rushing through this, but I know we're running out of time. Um, visit our campus. We would love to have you this summer. Um, schedule a tour online. And then here's our contact information. I'll also put it in the chat um, for easy access for you all. But thank you so much for your, for your attention this evening. We're really grateful to have the opportunity to speak with y'all more about the University of South Carolina. Go Gamecocks. Great, thank you. Um, all great information shared tonight. Um, hope everyone um, got a good bit of it, um, but we're not done yet. So we still have some time left. And so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and pivot into our Q&A portion of the session. And so I'll ask if all the presenters can turn on their cameras to themselves and go ahead and get started on this first question here which is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented it. Awesome. Um, so my biggest piece of advice would be to utilize your resources that you have around you, whether that be through your college counselors at your high school, um, or even reaching out to admission staff, admission staff at the institutions that you're looking at, current students, faculty, um, anyone to kind of give you more insight on the institution, um, as well as making a list of things that you don't want to negotiate on when it comes to a school that you're interested in attending. So that can help you kind of narrow down once you start learning more about various schools and when to um, start figuring out which ones you like to apply to. I would echo that and I would also say um, when you're applying to any of the schools that you're looking at, um, try to visit if you can. Um, try to get that experience of what the school feel is going to feel like because that's going to be where you're spending a lot of time over your four years on that campus, as well as on your application, make sure that you have a second pair of eyes that goes over your application. Uh, I know we have all stories of reading applications with uh, grammar mistakes, punctuation mistakes, addressing it to the wrong university, things like that happen a lot more than you would think. So have that second pair of eyes, an English teacher, a parent, somebody that you trust, um, look over your application to make sure you're presenting yourself in your best light possible. Awesome, thanks. Uh, again, my name is Tyler from North Carolina State University. And my piece of advice is to trust the process, but to feel very comfortable with every place that you submit an application. Just remember that you are submitting an application. So your application does receive different decisions. We know that in many cases, we hope to provide as many admits as we possibly can, but we get more applications from qualified students than we have the space for. So if you get a denial, please know it's not a rejection. I promise that you will land on your feet at a great institution and to, to submit those applications to places that you know that you'll be successful at no matter who else you hear from. 
Hey y'all, again, um, Aaliyah Talinsky from Coastal Carolina University. Um, kind of similar to what others were saying, but visit as many schools as possible. Um, there are definitely campuses that are open. Um, they might not be as in depth as what you want for a campus visit, but definitely see which colleges you are interested in are having you know, Monday through Friday campus visits like us, Monday through Friday, we do have uh, campus tours available. So visit as many schools as possible. Um, and also uh, use your admissions counselors that you are talking to at any of the schools that you're looking at, because we definitely are a great resource for you. We will help you with your application process and any questions that you have related to those universities you're interested in. Such great advice coming from my colleagues. Um, and, and so anything that I would add, I, first of all, I would echo everything that everybody else has said already, um, but I would absolutely add that students, I'm talking to you right now. I know parents are, are in the chat too, but um, students, this is your process, right? Have your support system in the loop. Um, you know, have those conversations with your support systems about um, cost, financial aid, and and what is what they what is a good fit for you, what you think is a good fit for you. Um, you know, something that's a great fit for your best friend may not be a great fit for you, and don't apply to that school just because your best friend's thinking about it, even if you know that it's not going to be a good either academic or social or financial fit for you. Um, and parents, now I'm talking to you let your student do the work. Let your student do the work. We love hearing from you, but we really love hearing from our students um, and to hear them advocating for themselves through this process. Of course, there are some things that it's very much appropriate for y'all to, to stick, your, stick your head in on, which is absolutely welcome, um, but we really do love hearing from our students and, um, and making sure that they are driving the bus. And all great advice. Um, again, it's always great hearing directly from those who work um, at the respective institutions to offer advice, suggestions, and um, we, we appreciate it. Uh, we're going to try to squeeze in one more question here, and that is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Um, so we'll, we'll make sure everyone gets an opportunity to respond. Awesome. Um, so I'll quickly say, um, at Elon, we have something every Tuesday called College Coffee. Um, and pre-pandemic, we would all go to um, the various quads and fountains on campus. And it's an opportunity for students, faculty, and staff to kind of interact with one another and get to know each other outside of the confined environments they traditionally get to know each other in. Um, who doesn't love free coffee and breakfast on a Tuesday morning? Um, and during the pandemic, we were able to actually keep that going virtually while even throwing in mindfulness props, prompts that really allowed for us to kind of check in on those, especially during you know, the tough times that were around us. And we are now doing it socially distanced in smaller um, arenas as well. So tradition was still able to, to keep going throughout um, everything this past year brought. Uh, for us here at High Point actually was birthed from uh, COVID times. Uh, so each week this uh, year, we've been having food trucks come on campus as a socially distant outdoor way of being able to bring students together outside of uh, activities and events in classrooms. Um, so we bring in uh, two to three food trucks in every single week, depending on the day. Uh, sometimes Taco Tuesdays, we bring in that taco truck. Everybody lines up for days. Um, but that's probably been my best one is because students are being more uh, open about being uh, how much they're appreciating their friends and appreciating the time they get to spend with others and really uh, fostering those moments and building those memories because they have such limited contact uh, outside of classrooms and, and events and stuff like that due to COVID. So it's been awesome. Awesome. And my uh, favorite campus tradition is actually one started by our students as well as uh, if you don't know, fun fact, Krispy Kreme started in North Carolina, so a group of students thought that they would run from campus to the closest Krispy Kreme, eat a dozen donuts, make it back to campus. We have since turned that into a global phenomenon called the Krispy Kreme Challenge. It's a fundraiser for a local children's hospital. You still have to run from campus, our iconic bell tower to Krispy Kreme, eat a dozen donuts, make it back and do not, and keep all those contents within your body to receive an award. So congratulations to those who complete the annual Krispy Kreme challenge. 
Okay, favorite tradition on Coastal's campus is definitely our CINO Day, which CINO stands for Coastal is number one. Um, it's just a huge carnival for all our students on campus. Free food, free t-shirts, free rides. I don't even know, it was one of those spinny rides where you stand and you spin around and all that. Um, and we actually had it uh, this March um, because it's an outdoor event. So we were able to make sure that everybody was kind of, you know, following the COVID policies and all of that. But um, we were able to still give that to our students and it's the longest tradition. And it's, it's really the, the happiest day um, on Coastal's campus is the Carnival Day. These are all so fun to hear. Um, so my favorite tradition at the University of South Carolina is one that's been around for at least 100 years. Um, it is called the Tiger Burn. So every year we have a rival institution also in South Carolina. They are orange and purple and their mascot's a tiger. So every year before the football game um, that we have at the very end of the football season against them, um, our engineering students build a giant paper mache tiger and we take it out to the Green Street Fields and we set it on fire um, as part of a very fun and harmless rivalry tradition that we have at South Carolina. Um, hopefully one of these days we can start to win some of those football games, but until then it is still a very fun tradition to take part of um, as a Gamecock. And these are always my favorite to hear as well. I always love hearing about the different traditions on campus and um, a favorite event. It honestly is what makes, makes your school really unique. So thank you all for sharing. Thank you to each of you for uh, joining us. We have reached the conclusion of this virtual college fair, but um, as we close, there'll be a very quick four question survey that will appear. Um, if you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback will be really helpful. And lastly, this session um, is being recorded and will be available early next week at strivescan.com backslash FRH. SD. Again, thank you so much to our presenters and thank you so much to you all. I hope you have a great night.